transanal endoscopic microsurgery was introduced by the Booz Group in 1983. The technique has gained international interest and is currently widely implemented for both benign and malignant lesions, which aren't amenable for colonoscopic resection. The case we will present is that of a 77-year-old male with poor overall health. He has been diagnosed with synchronous locally invasive and metastatic prostate adenocarcinoma and a bulky midrectal cancer. The multidisciplinary team meeting advised on radical radiochemotherapy combined with hormone therapy for the prostate. The patient tolerated the treatment well with only minor fatigue, mucus discharge and rectal blood loss. Unfortunately, clear residual disease was found on follow-up endoscopy and MRI. Therefore, a rescue TEM was deemed most appropriate seeing the overall poor condition. The patient was in prone position before the TEM kit was installed and scope centralized on the residual cancer tissue visible in between 5 and 10 o'clock position. It is advisable to abide by a 1 cm safety margin, even for benign lesions, as has been shown that up to 31% of cases have a focus of associated malignancy. Dissection with cautery was started from the lowest portion moving upwards to both left and right side through the rectal wall into the perirectal fatty tissue, while making sure not to touch or disrupt the tumor. A full thickness resection is technically easier to perform than mucosectomy and is recommended for staging as well as to ensure adequate safety margins. Due to radiotherapy, the tissue quality was very poor, with markable edema and focal fibrosis, leading to suboptimal view and subsequent opening of the anterior rectal wall above the peritoneal reflection. As adjacent bowel loops came into view, dissection was continued with care to avoid damage to the surrounding intra-abdominal organs. Due to the perforation, we experienced a brief loss of pneumorectum, while the pressure in the intra-abdominal compartment equalized, resulting in a less optimal exposure of the operation area, leading to a more extended 360 degree resection. Furthermore, the sudden pneumoperitoneum reduced his ventilation capacity, which he, notwithstanding his COPD, supported rather well for the remainder of the procedure. After dividing the lost trans of tissue, the tumor could be resected in toto. The excision cavity was checked for hemostasis before the peritoneal defect was thoroughly examined to ensure no intra-abdominal trauma had occurred. Next, the lumen of the proximal rectum was clearly identified. Subsequently, the peritoneal defect was hermetically closed using a continuous Philoc trio suture while making sure not to incorporate any adjacent bowel into the closure. Next, the rectum was thoroughly rinsed to minimize the risk of tumor seeding and lower the bacterial load. A second layer of multiple VLOC trio sutures were used to perform mucosal approximation to obtain defect closure and hemostatic control. A lot of attention was paid on the suturing of the 360 degree defect to minimize the risk of twisting and stenosis, as correction later on is virtually impossible while using a barbed suture. Although the lumen appeared to be narrowed, it could easily be passed by the scope. The patient was discharged at day 5 with minimal discomfort and agreeable rectal function. The pathology showed a YPT2, R1, L1, V0, B1 and X, MX due to suspicion of involved deep margin. At the 6 months follow-up appointment, endoscopy and MRI revealed some stenosis without signs of recurrence.
The stenosis, however, was easily passed with a gastroscope, and only a small region of granulation tissue around the rim could still be observed. We plan to follow up the patient closely for at least five years, with during the first year a three-monthly clinical exam, CA, endoscopy and MRI. Thereafter, a six-monthly review will be advised, with yearly CT chest and abdomen. In the literature, there is mounting evidence for the curative first-line resection of early malignance or even rescue treatment after neoadjuvant treatment for more advanced malignancy. There is also a role for palliative resection in high operative risk patients of patients who have declined curative surgery but look for mere symptom control. The benefits of them are numerous, as it is a true minimally invasive procedure with low morbidity and mortality, short length of stay and improved organ preservation rate with adequate function. Nonetheless, this comes at an increased risk of local recurrence and increased need for knee adjuvant treatment to downsize and downstage compared to rectal resection. Unfortunately, there is occasionally need for an often challenging rescue resection. To summarize, TEM has shown to be safe and feasible, but occasionally challenging nonetheless, especially for circumferential, low, and anteriorly located lesions above the peritoneal reflection. Complications as peritoneal perforation can be managed by TEM and a 360 degree resection can be closed and heals with minimal stenosis even after prior radiotherapy.